Hey, everybody. Welcome to EIS Live once again. I think I'm getting a report that we actually are live at this point. Um, if, my, if my scouts out there can let me know that we are live, Christiane is telling me we're all good. So it looks like we're on. Praise God. That's awesome. So <laughs> thanks for joining us today. And of course, um, if you're watching this right now, it's because you've subscribed to our new EIS app. And this is the only way that you're going to see these live broadcasts now. So make sure to tell your friends to subscribe. Um, and also, if you're not familiar with EIS, I always like to give you a little picture snapshot of who we are. Uh, we're a coaching and mentoring entity that focuses more on helping people become their genuine selves more than kind of fixing them up, quote unquote. And that's because we believe the only way to discover your why and purpose is to be and become your authentic self. So we help people employ a tested process, tried process and proven process uh, that actually helps them move into essentially a new paradigm for living uh, in their personal lives and in their professional lives as well. So it's a lifestyle change uh, that brings genuine life transformation, not just band-aids to help us get a, a little better at this or that. So this applies, as I mentioned, to every area of our lives our relationships with ourselves, with God, significant others, marriage, business, virtually every area of life. So these broadcasts are here to present actual testimonies of people who have entered this process or are participating in this process, made it a lifestyle essentially, um, and experienced life transformation as a result and have learned how to change their life paradigm to one that keeps them in a forward moving process by employing the tools, principles, and disciplines as a lifestyle. And then we also feature our own team members, authors, and other guests who lend value into this particular community that we're serving. So um, you're invited to ask questions. I'm still not sure if we're going to be able to answer them because uh, our whole platform has kind of changed. And in order to answer your questions, we have to transfer them from the app over through cyberspace over to me somehow. So we're going to see if that works today. So go ahead and give it a shot when that time happens and I'm getting a message right now. Looks like we're on, okay. So to begin today, I wanna to introduce someone who's very important to EIS. Um, and Anita is one of our, our counselors. She's been on board. Actually, I'll ask her how long once I, once I get her on here. But in fact, we've known each other for about 30 years and you've seen Anita's name popping up in the Daily Journal quite a bit. Um, she's one of our main contributors. And so you read her, her posts, and I know a lot of you do because I see the count of how many opens. Uh, and a lot of times they, they certainly outdo me in, in my posts. So that means that a lot of people are reading her stuff. And that's because she's just really a wealth of wisdom um, after working as a nurse, as a professional, raising a large family. And um, recently her and her husband Pepe joined our staff. And Pepe is also Spanish speaking. I want to make sure I mention that because we do have a Spanish speaking counselor on staff now after all this time. So we're really excited about that. So I'm gonna bring her on so she can share a little bit more. Hey, hey, Anita. hey Bill, thanks again for inviting me. I enjoy coming on your live presentations. I'm grateful to be here and engaging again in another eye-opening EIS live journey. Um, and for, for, yay, yay EIS. Um, so I'm a counselor here. I have walked on many paths in my past that have afforded me a lot of experience and wisdom to really understand many of life's deep issues, still dealing with some of them today in my life. So it's a daily walk, an authentic daily self-awareness walk um, that I take each and every day. And um, I know what it means to be authentic, to come on and have that vulnerability I find it very cathartic, very helpful for sharing. And also I love to spur other people onto healing. So I'm just, I'm just honored to be here. And I thank you, Bill, for allowing me to um, share this platform with you today. Thanks. Well, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And um, I mentioned to you before, I love having you and Pepe on, not because we just have such a great history together, but um, it's an interesting story how you, um, you know, kind of moved to Florida you know, from New Jersey, because that's where we were, had been friends for so many years and, you know, wound up going through the NCCA training modules and 
you've recently got your master's, so congratulations yes. again. Thank and, you. And uh, became, became a clinical supervisor as well, so that's really awesome. Thank you, Bill. So um, I say all that so that people have confidence in our staff that we're all trained pastoral counselors. Um, Anita, one of the highest ranking ones now at this mm -hmm. point, so I'm happy to have you on our team. Thank you so much, Bill. I really appreciate the, the ability, and I just, I love working with the people. I can't tell you the joy I have spending with, especially the young, the young girls I'm finding um, just have so much to sow into their lives and they're grateful and thankful. I get emails all the time um, after I meet with them on um, how much their lives have changed. So I'm just so thankful for all that you've, that you've allowed me to have. So thank you so That's much. And I want to be a part of this community. That's awesome. And you have three younger girls uh, of yes. your own. It gave you a lot of experience along the way, too, just like me. And a stepdaughter. <laughs> so I have four. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, any of the ladies that are watching out there today, today, if you're looking for a counselor and thinking about tapping into EIS, Anita is a great choice. All righty then. So let's move on. I'm so excited to introduce our guest today. Um, Kayla is somebody who's been around EIS for a while, and she's going to share her story that's she was actually around EIS before it was EIS and under our various incarnations over the over the years. I don't know her all that well, so I'm looking forward to get, getting to know her a little bit more today. Um, she's been in business for some time, and the business had become an anchor in her life. But also, um, she wasn't equipped across the board to handle all that life was going to bring her way in terms of relationships and life in general, um, as she had a ways to go and, you know, kind of getting into that new paradigm and, and that the business, while it was an anchor, didn't wasn't an all-encompassing fix or an answer to her life. And that's where EIS, in whatever incarnation it was at the time, you know, kind of came <laughs> into blanks and helping her to navigate in a, in a healthier way forward. So let's welcome Kayla. Hey. Hi. Hey, Miss Kayla. So How are you? To, nice to be here with you. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Yes. Can't wait to just plug right into your story. Oh, yeah. Let's dive in. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm super excited. And um, I think I only met you in person once that I can remember. And that was the last event that I, we were we were just at not that long ago. Um, so we're getting to know each other a little bit. And of yeah. course, you're working with uh, CYL, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Yep. And what do, you, what do you do for, for the organization? So I actually work behind the scenes as a developer for a lot of the educational systems and the events. Um, so very much love having my hands on, you know, just creating for the development of CYL, but then also mentored within that system too. So awesome. awesome. And you're quite the EIS um, student. Oh yeah. <laughs> Kiel and I meet up on the often. Um, which I need. I need to uh, keep myself in line. That's for sure. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, I was reading through the notes that you sent me, and I, I really was super struck at the self-awareness that was evidenced um, in, in your ability to even stage the journey in stages, you know, looking back um, in a in kind of timeline view. And um, I, I know basically how this works, of course, and as we're living this out, many times we're not really that self-aware uh, to be able to do that. And I was really struck that you were able to do that and help us all today to kind of take an honest look at what we're doing and why. And I'm so looking forward to hearing you articulate um, how you kind of moved along that process, became self-aware. I'm thinking that you must have done a degree of journaling along the way, for example, Mm -hmm. to help you to keep that track and timeline of like, okay, this isn't working. Let me go back and figure out what's not working and that kind of a thing um, and learn how to change that area of my life kind of a thing. And again, a lot of times we're not self-aware and I'm a big, a big proponent and I push journaling all the time for that reason, because otherwise this life is just happening and yeah. we don't have any way to go back except our memories and a new incident coming up in our lives that pushes a button, perhaps, <laughs> you know, that triggers a memory of something uh, like, oh, yeah, that happened. You know, yeah. it's better to do it in a proactive, positive movement kind of a way. And you seem to, um, you know, again, articulate all that with your notes. 
So that's why I said, instead of me coming up with a bunch of questions to ask, it looks like you did a great job of already formulating that. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to let you go ahead and roll with your, with your story. Okay. And then um, we'll interrupt and interject along the way. How's that sound? That sounds great. Awesome. So, you know, starting from like the very beginning, though, I've always grown up in New York. Um, you know, I've always had a really nice home. Um, my parents have always been really wonderful. I'm an only child. I, and I guess first to base this off, let everyone know my temperament so this story can make more sense over time. But in inclusion, I am a sanguine. Um, in control, I am a sanguine phlegmatic. And then in affection, I am a sanguine compulsive. So <laughs> across the board, um, <sighs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, my and by the way, just for people who, just sorry to interrupt, but people who are watching that might not have done their temperament test mm -hmm. uh, and understand temperament and all these words that we're talking about, I mean, this is one of the central core uh, elements of the process that we work with, of course. And I know you're going to be talking about that. It's probably going to be rolling into just about every area that you're going to be sharing as well. So getting to know your temperament is one of the first steps in the process. Yes. And it's crucial in understanding yourself. Um, and if, the, if our goal is to understand ourselves and know ourselves and become genuine and authentic, then this is a, a crucial first step. Oh, yeah. And so it's interesting not learning your temperaments until you know, I was like, you know, 29, 28. <laughs> and so for uh, so many moments of my life, I can look back and think I'm crazy for the things I need because you're unaware that the person, you know, responding back to you is completely different, you know? So like a lot of times in my life that we'll, you know, discuss, I thought that I was an outcast or needed too much or a burden or, you know, just always in the wrong community base, um, mm -hmm. you know, and being an only child, I was always really in pursuit to like find my own like my parents were always really loving and they're still together till this day and their own humans working through their scripts and their overcomings very receptive to my growth being a part of their growth and us being able to break change and generational scripts that you know have held us back um working out of codependency i'd say like between the three of us being so intertwined um, which I guess, I guess you could say is a blessing and a curse because I really learned how to love in my home. Um, mm -hmm. But I also, um, through extended family and different relationships within our family, um, learned to be also a people pleaser and um, try to like fix everything and everyone all of the time, which seemed very natural to me because I just love to love people and pour into people and be that saving grace and, um, you know, like the sanguine, tendency of, you know, having a conversation with someone and directly going into your next conversation and um, always in that mode of really having to clean everything up. And, um, but, you know, we, the three of us have really gained a lot of, from EI solutions, I've been able to have conversations with them um, to have us all in a healthier spot to be able to grow forward, which has been really nice. Um, but growing up, we, I was, I've always been on Long Island. I very early in life had some really great structure with martial arts, a, little, a dojo around the corner from me. Um, my parents put me in when I was five and it really just stuck tightly to me. You know, an area of life that I realize now really just implemented so hard into the way my life panned out as in, you know, an area that I can lean into that's giving me structure, focus, discipline, love, attention, all of these things that really served my temperament in a healthy way. Um, you know, and then, you know, so as I got older and, you know, martial arts kind of left and, you know, college came in and, you know, independent mode really started, I guess you could say I started losing my path a little bit and, um, started to then really, I guess, recognize traits of myself that were not healthy and the codependency started to rise to a maximum point, um, right after, you know, I, I left college and my 20s began. Um, so I think like my childhood really, um, you know, allowed me to love and experience and be who I was um, in the home. And then outwardly, um, really just discovering who I was because I was always very heightened in every environment. Always followed the rules, but very 
community based and always kind of struggling of where I fit in. But um, the business really gave me an availability where I was finally able to be myself in an area and focus. And um, that grace was awesome until all of a sudden uh, the self growth implemented into that. And I had to lay out everything on the table to be an ultimate leader that I just wasn't yet prepared for. Yeah. And that's the part I just want to kind of accentuate that, that, you know, I think that's what you meant when you, you know, you realized, and this is pretty common, I think in the business, because the areas that you can either, either falter or excel in, or probably both are going to be the areas that are required for a specific area of your life like that, mm -hmm. you know? And so we can invest those, those things can shine. Uh, like I said, there also might be areas where we're going to fail in, uh, but that's okay because it's a sweet spot, for example, and then we can function in that. But the rest of the stuff, um, and a, a lot of times we'll, we'll qualify the rest of ourselves by that area. And that's going to be short change too. It's not going to work. You can probably relate to that. Oh, yeah. I mean, being a sanguine, I'm always, my entire life, it's about validation and performing and talent and you know, very naturally to me, um, I was talented in the business in a way where I could easily connect with people, form relationships, be within, you know, heightened events. And um, very quickly, my talent um, proved to not be enough. And, you know, for me, I don't think I was necessarily like ready to, well, I, I just, I was, I love how you said in the beginning that I'm self-aware because I'm just now getting to the point in my life where I feel like I've gained enough clarity to now dive into self-awareness. Huh. So really looking back over the ten, last 10 years of where I once was and where I am now, I'm just now gaining the gift of being self-aware and really being able to dive into those parts of me that can further construct me into the next level of self. And just remember something really important, um, Kayla, is this is a lifelong thing. I mean, I'm almost 60, Bill, a little older than me, and we still have areas of self-awareness that we're finding. So... Um, oh, yeah. I wouldn't beat myself up over that. That's for sure. Oh, no. Yeah, it's it's been <laughs> quite the journey to get to this point now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like when I was younger in the business, and we'll go into my timeline of that, but I couldn't yet foresee what I what my life was going to be. And I was so much in fear all of the time. I have mm -hmm. bad anxiety. So or I did have bad anxiety before I had the tools to properly prepare for when anxiety came. And um, I was always leaning into fear. I was always trying to find all the answers, um, you know, like for my life going forward, like a lot of the things we have now in life with like um, of my generation with like being able to like ask for answers of the future and um, not really having faith inside of me. I couldn't look into my life and say, this is where I want to be for the rest of my life to help and serve because I didn't know who I was. I was just very talented in an arena that lifted me up, but I, on the other end of it, was really struggling over who I was in general. And I could not look ahead and say I can successfully help people. Um, and I would have the thought constantly of, I don't know if I... Um, can commit to something for the rest of my life. I'm, I'm in flight. I was used to be in flight mode constantly. And when I got too prominent in an area, I would run, you know, because I couldn't, I always needed the answer of what was yet to come, not realizing that that was me standing in scarcity and fear. And so now like, you know, you're fast forwarding from 19 to when I got back in the business at 28 and that little hiatus I took. And then when I got back into the business, it was more me looking in faith saying, thank God I have this place in my life to be for the rest of my, my time to fill a purpose that now I'm aware of. And it was a big shift from fear into faith because I, I had to address my fear. And the, the last five years of my life have just been, you know, climbing, climbing these mountains to release the fear to now I can say, um, I don't know where tomorrow leads, but um, life is short. And my and now I have a grateful heart to, um, I don't look 30 years ahead and say, oh my goodness, I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to be for the rest of my life. I look 30 years ahead and I go, 
thank God I have a place to thrive and flourish for the time that I'm being gifted in the now. Right. And that's a lot of what EI Solutions has done for me, what Kiel has done for me, what Damali did for me when I was going through a lot of obstacles in my life, um, reminding me that the business is, is not my God, but it's a gift and a tool of what my anointing is moving forward. And that um, my purpose is, is genuinely to be the best me and work on myself every day and have that result be a light for what I'm trying to shift in the world. But my entire existence growing up, I stood in a lot of fear of, of not really knowing what that was. Um, and I really needed to learn the hard way to find myself. And that's where my timeline really comes in with the business. I don't know if you guys want me to dive right into that. So people can have more clarity over like what that looked like as I was going from 19 to now 29, about to be yeah. 30 in May. <sighs> but I'm ready for a decade to say the least. Um, but when I started the business at 19, I, I was always a visionary and really you know, forward thinking. Like I was the person at school who was the class clown, but like, let's say everyone was running out for waffle day. I was not doing it. I was staying in school, getting my work done. I'll be the class clown when everyone is in the right setting, but I want to stay focused and in control mm -hmm. always too. So um, I think that's where like my, my heightened sanguine comes in. It's like, um, it kind of sometimes puts me in a place where like I was expected to do certain things. And, and I guess that's where the business gave me grace. At 19, I found a place where I could be myself, be excited, but still have focus on a goal. I was very always goal oriented, getting my black belt in martial arts, um, moving forward in my grades in school, being in honors programs, but I never knew what I wanted to be. And it was like this internal struggle for me. I remember picking a school to go away to college and being like, I don't know what I want to be and like breaking down to my parents. Um, like I wanted to go for acting or something performance based that could fill me. Um, I, I could never think about sitting behind a desk every day. So when I saw the business through my high school boyfriend, um, which is which was my first long term relationship um, from like 17 to 20, um, it was like all of a sudden I found a place where my my puzzle pieces fit. And so. No, I, that's when I really first met the Papalardos, Um and I give it all to them. And you know, just because they've really they've really been there for me when I deserved it the least, and they have always risen for me in times of need. Um, and there's a bunch I could say about that, and I will. But um, when I got in the business at 19, it was a really big shift of my life because I was looking for something and I was excited. But then my cousin, my baby cousin, he was like 13, um, at the same time died from brain cancer. Wow. So I was a mess because he was like my little brother. But then I was really searching. You know, I was like, what is life? What is God? What is purpose? What am I supposed to do with this pull I feel inside of me to heal and to make things better? And I remember Tony um, just really lifting me up through those moments and um, just seeing strength in me and awareness in me that I... I didn't even know was a thing. Like I didn't even really understand what leadership was or that that was a way of life where that um, healing people and guiding people and lifting people up could be a way of life. But in one of the hardest moments of my life, um, the business, I, I like to call it like my protective shield, as in there have been so many moments in the last 10 years where, um, you know, the grace of the gift of the business has really saved me and molded me into the areas and paths that I was supposed to see clearer. You know, like my cousin passing was traumatic, but it lifted me into an area of a, a grateful heart um, that I wish came more solidly a little sooner. I think that was more uh, maturity of age, but it definitely put me into an area of uh, purpose, community, um, discovering my path with the spirit and, and just really constructing me into this place now that I was discovering myself. And so that was 19. Um, 
really quickly in the business. I gained some stance, I guess you could say, you know, um, we did things a little differently back in the day. So we really only had the area of the network, you know, we didn't have like all these other resources. So it was really thriving in the area of being able to connect with people, um, bringing them into the network. And so I was being highlighted a lot and recognized a lot. Um, then I met, um, my, um, an, the next person I was in a relationship with. So at this point I was no longer in the relationship with my high school boyfriend. Um, we were still in the same place, but really like respected each other's, um, you know, space in the business. And then I met, um, the next person I was with. And so that shifted my area in the business a lot that brought me over to Brian and Sia. Um, and Brian and Sia are, my brother and sister in this life, they are people who have molded me and guided me and supported me every step of the way and have um, just helped me see parts of me I haven't yet seen or dig through things and stand for me. Um, I've never experienced that brother-sister relationship like they've provided it, like saying like saying you're going to do what you're going to do all the time. Um, the relationships that I built, built very early in the business are a reason why I came back years later because I um, still really have never experienced relationships like that where people say they're going to do what they're going to do and they do it and they stand in who they are. And they've always been those people. You know, They've always been these saving graces for me. So when I started working with them, um, that was another shift for me. So assuming a lot of people on this call are in the business, um, you know, they know, okay, so first I started in one arena and one business structure, and then I got switched to another business structure. So I'm on my second business. Um, we built for a while together within that we got engaged, um, built a really strong group, um, hit a high level in, in that business, um, traveled within that area. And for a sanguine, um, when you're earning a lot and you're gaining a lot and you're gaining an hour, uh, an area of stance, especially when I was younger, it was the me game. You know, so I was I loved my people, but it was about me winning. And I was very self-serving back in the day where now I'm very um, like it's the we game, like generational preservation, like how to help others people rise. But when I was younger, it was all about like, OK, how can I get on stage? How can I do this? How can I do that? Um, and then that relationship fell apart. So um, that was, you know. Hard for me because not only did I lose the person I was with more out of their choice, I also um, lost what I was working for. And um, that entire structure of business, then I had to leave behind, you know, out of mentorship, you know, it was really important for me. They guided me into just starting fresh and really letting go and of uh, what that situation was and having confidence and vision within me that I was very capable of starting again. So, um, and also in the business, uh, how that worked for me is um, starting again from zero meant that was no longer in leadership at the capacity I was. Um, I was no longer at that table or at the trips or, um, just in that area of life. And it was a big decision. And, um, you know, and, you know, going through two different relationships early in the business, getting engaged, um, losing that relationship, um, being young with a really high, strong, like reputation in the room. Um, there was a lot going on there. And then I started my third organization, which is, um, the organization I'm with now, which is incredible and thriving. And I, I look back to all these divine moments of time that maybe were very hard to go through in the, that moment. But, you know, if I never went through those things, I would not have been, you know, interconnected with Brian and Sia, who are my everything. Like it's, it's very um, apparent that I was supposed to be, you know, molded with them over time but you know then growing into this new arena it took a lot of strength for me to let go of my ego and my pride it was like the first time in my life I really experienced like a huge amount of humility and um I guess like started really like questioning myself you know like it was like okay two failed relationships everyone's telling me I am a great leader visionary 
this, that, but why? Were you tested already by this time? Did you already know what your, um, your scores were, your temperament scores? No, this was back in 2000 and uh, I was 23 at this time. Okay. So because you fit perfectly into your category. So I'm listening. Oh, yeah. That was well, right. Perfect, we, did, so. we didn't have you guys then. I think it was like right when I right when I switched to Brian and Zia's fourth organization, when my engagement ended, that's when I heard about Bill because um, he went to Bill and Bill suggested a couple of things. And I was like, whoa, 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 who's this guy who doesn't even know us? <laughs> Uh, and I think that's when Bill first started coming around, but we were just like, weren't in a place where we were aligned enough to even jump into something like that collectively. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in a place, he wasn't in a place. Um, so we just decided or you know, it was like a, lo a lot of deep discussion for me to begin again. And um, so I built a lot of that, a lot of that structure up again. It took a lot um for me and, to like well, and just to interject before is uh yeah. that is one thing that eis definitely um talks about a lot and that is when you're in a relationship you do have to be counseled separately at first you've got to find out who you are before you can put yourself in the mix so that right. that's something that definitely when people come on couples come on now um we separate them out yeah yeah. yeah, we were both really lost. You know, I wasn't yeah. prepared to be engaged. I wasn't prepared to build a business with someone. I really wasn't. And um, a lot of that was more impulse. Like, this seems like it would be really great to do together. And impulsivity was a great um, <laughs> part of my, you know, area growing up in my 20s. Oh, yeah, I made a lot of impulse decisions. And that leads me right to where, you know, my journey in my early tw 20s in the business kind of took a standstill because I, I built another organization. Um, but then I could like, that's when I could not look 30 years ahead and feel um, sh strong enough to say, I don't know if people are going to be able to like, let's say I build this huge organization. Am I going to feel like 10 years from now um, I can still build people with strength. And I didn't, yet know that within myself. And I was too fearful at that moment to address it. I look back and I wish that I would have journaled and um, <laughs> thoughts and been more expressive about those things. But instead I went into flight mode mm -hmm. and I um, pretty much disappeared. And, you know, it, it led me into a path where I met um, my ex-husband um, because I am recently divorced. So from 19 to 28, my life was a journey of toxic relationships of me trying to fix men, not knowing myself, um, really unaware of who I was, but very talented within my temperaments to be able to create things in an arena that, um, you know, lifted up, you know, areas of fun and we're, we're much more in an area now where we're about healing and transparency and feeling forward. And what I had to recognize is I don't have to, when I came back into the business, I recognized that through Tony and his overcomings and just another area of his life that saved my life is, um, I get to be a transparent, feeling forward, healing, um, imperfect person for other imperfect people in, that are looking to heal. And when I was 24 and I was not a perfect person, that scared me because I thought to be a leader, you had to be perfect. And I was nowhere near <laughs> that. At I was um, impulsive and um, doing toxic things and filling my um, emotions with things that would numb me and I'm getting into toxic relationships. And so when I left the business at 24, I met someone who was totally other end of the spectrum. He was a musician, um, you know, just different lifestyle, entertainment, um, kind of just like simplistic. Um, we can just live in this type of, okay, we're done with this agenda. Let's figure out what's next type of thing. And um, growing up in the business when I was younger, 
that only served me for so long. At first I was like, nice, like an area of life. I can just simple, don't have to worry about anyone, but myself, I can don't have to work on myself. I can fix you because there's a lot going on here. And I was just like, great, like an area where I can run away and keep running. And we did a lot of spontaneous fun things, but it came to the point where I was now looking 30 years ahead and I was more nervous over the structure I did not have. Um, so diving deep, deep, deep into areas of, um, just like the, I guess the darkest times of my life, it was, you know, a mentally abusive relationship. I did not have mentorship. I, I was surrounding myself in communities that never fit with me, just always out, um, you know, doing drugs, like doing things that were never me. Even when I was younger, like I never went out. I never went to the bar. It was always the DD. And, you know, I um, just always kind of like the mama of everyone. And I still was mildly in that community. Like, like, like I, I felt like I was better in a way, um, but then it's like compared to who, you know, like a bunch of other people who are very stirring, uh, stirring and, and dealing with their own stuff and being guided by no one. And so I started um, becoming like what we talk about, like a poser, you know, like I was leaning in a lot of fear and trying to heal everyone around me and I had no capacity to, I always would say, I feel like I don't fit in here, right? And on the back end of things, like every night when I would go to bed, I would dream about, you know, the association, Tony and Francis, Brian and Sia, like they were always in my mind, like in the back of my mind, like, um, you know where you're supposed to be, like, you know, just like God giving me those little hints along the way of like, I'm still here. Um, you, I know in the back of your mind, you know exactly what you need. And like the business molded me in such a way when I was younger, I didn't even realize where I had such high standards of my marriage and where I wanted it to be and where I, like, I, it got to a point where a couple of years in, I was like, I can't do this anymore. We, we can barely pay for our groceries and we're screaming at each other every day. And I want to escape all the time. And, um, I was so lost and for the first time in my life, I really just fell onto my knees and, you know, it, you don't know, I guess, like, I guess that's where like awareness really is coming to me now because it's like, you can get a, you can be in really bad situations, but me being like a people pleaser, I would look at situations around me and go like, eh, mine's not that bad. Like suck it up. Like you're fine. Like, <laughs> as bad as you're making it and then on the narcissistic end when you're with someone who's keeping you in that box now you're often thinking like cognitive um cognitive how do you cognitively say yeah like where like i was trying to convince myself that i was the issue and the problem and um gaining issues within my mind like maybe I am just angry. Maybe I am just this person. Maybe I am just a burden. Maybe I, maybe this is just my fault. Cause I became a very angry person. Um, because I was surrounded by a lot of anger every day, no matter what. And I just, I didn't want to bother anyone with it. Cause I was, I'm always in that, I was always in that light for everyone else to fix things. Um, so I hid under that poser mentality for a while um, and that's what I did earlier in the business as well. So it was easy for me to kind of just like pretend everything was okay and shine my sanguine light on everyone when I was really internally uh, miserable, right? as you could say. And, uh, it'll be two years this month, um, where I walked back into Brian and Sia's house and, um, I just recognized I was home again. You know, it was like someone slapped me across the face and was like, where have you been? Um, but I definitely know that God didn't put me through those things, but he was standing with me through my hardest moments um, that I really needed to go through those things to know what I stand for and where my value lies. And, um, you know, having strength now behind me to be able to pour into the people that I'm responsible for you know those hardships really shifted me into someone who when I was younger 
wanted the business as a um, as an accolade or something that made me feel good. And now it's it's a need and a responsibility um, to share my testimony and my path with people who need healing and our leaders themselves, like, you know, Sia and Brian and Tony and Francis, Vinny and Dana, they've always done for me. You know, it's, um, you may not see who you are yet, but we see it and we're going to keep reminding you. And um, so these last two years have been an area of my life where it's like every moment of my life was preparing me for the now. And um, it's like my walk to the well, you know, like I had to take that walk to see everything a lot more clearly. And um, now I can come back to the business with newfound revelation. Um, and it's interesting because the business also presented me back with newfound revelation. So when I came back to the business and I recognized that they have grown immensely and I was still very much struggling I had to really look internally and and say like, wow, I was judging so many things when I left, so many things I was unhappy with, so many things that didn't satisfy me when this whole time I was the one who needed to grow. And wow, um, that's big. Years. Yeah. That is big. And if you didn't go through this, if you didn't have this paradigm shift, if you didn't go through this, you would have never been able to see the difference in what was before and what is now. Yeah. It's crazy <sighs> how timelines work back on that. And I'm, I'm very, I always speak up upon that, like within my group and stuff, it's just the three feet to gold mentality as in like, keep going because you never know what you're going to find from your journey as in, obviously I couldn't look back like at 19, I didn't know like, okay, well I'm being molded in the business when I'm younger. And then I'm going to go through all of these things. And like, you know, you say paradigm shift. I remember being, I remember struggling in my marriage and just like Francis's voice and Sia's voice. Like I can remember struggling at one point and having a panic attack and just laying on my bed curled up and trying to gain relief from anxiety. And um, that's why I say like every moment of my twenties, the business has always been my saving grace. Cause even when I wasn't around it, I was leaning back into it. And being reminded of it and little seeds of grace were being dropped into my mind to remind me where um, my healing was. And, you know, so my self-awareness is just peaking now. Um, but it's it's the last two years I decided I made a choice. I It was hard for me to walk back in that room and um, let my pride go because I was walking back into a room where um, everyone knew, a lot of people knew who I was and that I left and for a sanguine, um, not really knowing what to expect or how you're going to be perceived or seen. Uh, it took a lot, but, um, you know, it was everything to get back in that room. And what I recognized was this is your time to not only, um, serve your self love and gain respect back for yourself, but it's your time to grow in an area that you're really being gifted and it's time to value and see that now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got back in the business, um, Mar uh, February. So I saw Brian and Sia at the end of January. It's like nothing ever changed because they're incredible human beings. And, um, I got back in the business officially in March okay. and then I moved out of my, um, apartment with my ex-husband in April and I got divorced in August. Um, so this was 2021? 2020. 2020. Okay. Yeah, so right when COVID was hitting and everything was going crazy, I got back in the business. There was one in-person event we all did and then everything closed down. So I like just got back through the door um, and then everything shut down again. Um, but for me, it was a saving grace too, because I would be in my apartment in a very uncomfortable situation, but then I could be able to log on, um, and be around people who can help my mind and my soul prosper. And then that's when I really connected with you guys and Damali and, um, just like a lot of these areas of my life that 
build my worth up again and showed me who I was again, you know, going through years of abuse and then becoming somewhat abusive in the same way because that's the environment you're in. And um, I remember moving home and being very explosive over like losing my keys or like something not going exactly the way it was, which is so left field for me. Um, but that's where my swing was. It was all in fear. It was all in in terror of the unknown. I have to start my life over again. And I don't know how that looks. And um, mm -hmm. I finally decided like, no, I'm not going to run away anymore. I'm going to dig my feet in the cement and commit myself to an area of life that obviously I'm being pulled towards. Um, and so within that eight month period from February to November, I also um, went Eagle within our organization, which means you're just building a really prominent um, structure to get you to the next level of leadership. So um, building really strongly within the business while getting divorced um, was my saving grace in that situation because it gave me purpose within my pain. Mm -hmm. And um, I think like right after I got divorced too, there were a couple of people within my group who we're experiencing th similar things. And then all of a sudden, you know, reasons behind start happening. But um, I don't, no one really knew that I was getting a divorce or that I moved out or like any of these things, um, which is where I guess my sanguine flies true, but, and now we're here. So. Yeah, a lot of the things that you mentioned, um, you know, kind of going, you know, to, to go up, we always have to go down, right? Mm -hmm. To move ahead, we have to take a few steps back hit a bottom, whatever you want to call it, right? And so, but in that period of time, you used a couple of phrases that are a couple of my favorites, of course, like coping and hoping and tolerable recovery. And we kind of operate out of those places, um, which means we're basically operating out of the negative aspects of our temperament and we're surviving, we're not mm -hmm. thriving, um, and we're giving ourselves permission to do that. We may even know we're doing it, but don't have the mechanisms yet to be able to stop doing that. Um, so that's what it meant to me that you had an anchor in the business that was always kind of there. Um, and even when you were still stuck in it, you could get online, like you said, and, you know, connect with the people who had the goods and, you know, keep that lifeline going. Um, and also uh, one of the questions, by the way, there's a couple of questions up and I want to integrate this one um, before we move forward. It's a, the question is from Denisha. Um, how are you able to transform your weaknesses and your temperaments to your strengths? So I think you answered that a lot along the way, but when did you become cognitive of that? Um, I guess you could say like when my marriage was falling apart and I got back in the business, I, I knew I needed to change. Like, mm -hmm. I think the best part about the, the community is, um, it posturizes you to the point where it will give you a lay of protection to not make bad choices. It, you know, I always allowed myself to just do what felt good rather than to do what I really needed to stand stronger. You know, so I guess like the biggest part of my healing the last two years is being really satisfied with being single and being within my own. Um, a lot of that healing had to do with like me deciding to make a choice within any, every area of my temperament that I'm not going to let it control me. I'm, I'm going to let it help me thrive. And it's, it's interesting because I look back of like where a lot of these shifts happen of like where I decided to use my temperament as a strength. Mm -hmm. And it was literally just like drawing a line in the sand. Like I don't want to feel miserable anymore or upset or fearful. And I decided to wipe fear out of my life and stop asking questions every day and, um, you know, idolizing the business where if it was gone tomorrow, would I still be okay. Like I need to be okay. I'm um, just with myself and the spirit and with what I have, what Kiel really works on with me is um, the business isn't my God. It, it, it gives me so much. So sometimes I can put it in that position where then I, it brings me right back to fear. We're like, well, what if I lose it all? And it's like, no, no. Like these are things to help you move forward to advance into best level of self. 
Um, and that's where my strength lies in my faith because I have anxiety. I have task orientation disease. I have all of these things that keep me in an area of, um, well, what if, so I decided like, no, instead of worrying, I'm going to pray instead of being, um, fearful, I'm going to be faithful. I'm, I'm going to wipe out all of these areas of my life that, um, provide me answers of the unknown and just, um, like look forward knowing that, you know, I'm being prepared for what's to come. And I think that's the strength of what um, the business has given me. Like, I guess the relationships are the most prominent part. There's a quote that I read today that it said, generosity can expand past what you have given on a stage or a screen An offered an offering from a sage or a king is more than silver and gold. It is a seed of hope, a bud of faith. As in, there is no Kayla McKenna in the now, right now, without a Tony Papalardo. You know, like every part of me is through the experiences of others. And once I recognize that my testimony and my story and my strength is going to be able to do the same thing for other people, it, it shifted every choice I made into one that is going to prepare me for what's to come and to be stronger in my pursuits and to make choices that are going to serve what I need rather than what I want. Because I look at what Tony and Francis have done for me in my life. And, um, you know, it's really not about what they do on the stage. It's what they do behind the scenes that have constructed me into the human being I am today. And one of the things I see is one of your strengths that's speaking volumes to me right now and it's just part of what we do in the process itself is capturing all your thoughts like you're really good at being able to just say no no i'm not going to walk down that street again and i can see you even as you're speaking you're just pulling all those thoughts captive and then being able to walk it out then so that it is now your strength even in your you know even in your temperament because you just want to run or you just want to you know fly off but you're like no this is what i need to do sort of like your martial arts is speaking out to you also. Mm -hmm. like, this is what I got to do. So that's a big yeah. strength. Another question too that ties into all that, and then again, you've been answering it along the way, just like the temperament part, um, is how did your relationship with God evolve as you began to dig into the process? And I'm hearing a lot of that come out too, about you know putting things in the right perspective, like the business isn't God. You're not God because for a period of time, you certainly were like all of us. You know, we're calling the shots. And that's why the minute we start thinking in that direction, we start tanking, you know, because it's all swirling about. And like you said, it's not, you said, uh, and then making bad choices follows too, because you said, I started to make choices that serve what I need, not what I want. And that's a fruit of having God in the right position in your life as well, you know, because you're not self-serving, you're servant or more servant oriented. You're seeing that that's not working for you. Um, you stop coping and hoping you stop, surviving and start thriving and these are all elements of that paradigm shift that we talk about right like mm -hmm. all these things and then being cognitive of course is a big part of that as well being in counseling and having that voice in your life being a mirror in that form you know being able to reflect this back and say well what do you really think about that or what are you really seeing by these choices that you're making and i think just age too you know getting a little bit older you know helps <laughs> But it doesn't, it, all by so itself, it doesn't, you know, I mean, I worked in the, in the streets of New York City with, with homeless people and the addicts and everything for, that were in their 70s and 80s that never stopped running. So aging alone doesn't do it, but age combined, you know, with, with the accountability, with the mentorship, with the leadership in your life helps create these places where you can hit bottom. And, and that's what I said earlier is like to go up, you have to go down. And many times we think it's an upward trajectory all the time. You know, it's like, well, if I'm tanking, I'm failing, you know? And, mm -hmm. and we talk about this all the time too, is if we're failing, then that means that's another opportunity for me to lay hold of that, discover why I'm failing, not do those things anymore and choose differently as I move forward. And all of that won't happen unless we're surrendering to God. So I, like I said, I think you were answering that question along the way, but go ahead and add anything you want into that equation too. Then we're going to have to start wrapping up a little bit. Well, I, 
I love what we were talking about the other day, Bill, on one of your dailies when you were talking about the more you lean into fear, the more you discover because then you're really dealing with what's going on and then you discover faith and like what love actually is when you go, when you go really deep, you have no choice but to rise higher. And that's where I was. I was at, at the lowest I have ever been. I was rock bottom. And mm -hmm. I think a misconception with me at times within the business is that I'm always at this high, but I really have to work on it. Like I really have to be structured and focused on my daily life, you know, to not be anxious when I wake up in the morning. I have to lean into God to strip away my the crippling anxiety I used to have before even opening my eyes. I remember laying in my bed when I first got back in the business, still, still dealing with my marriage, all of these things. And before I even opened my eyes, the lists of what I needed to do start getting in my mind and it would cripple me for days. And so I needed an area beyond myself to lean into. I needed area of my life that would help me understand that, you know, fear and failure is part of the process to get you into a deeper understanding of what value based relationships, love and real faith actually looks like, you know, I, I always had a relationship with God through like the trees and the ocean and nature. And I always like felt the love of God, but I didn't know the love of God within pain, within fear, within suffering, within these areas of life that I didn't realize are actually the most prominent part about your relationship with God is because he's teaching you, you know, what's really important and, and how to see clearly. And it's like, like taking my walk to the well those past four years and really discovering that my drought and what I needed and, you know, the mentorship that really helped my life move forward, it put me in an area of awareness where now I was able to see clearly out of what I needed for my life to move forward. And, you know, that was the spirit. And it's interesting because, you know, when I was younger in the business, a, a, a question I would get often is like, how are you so happy all the time? You know, and I, I honestly did not know how to answer that. I would be like, I don't know. I'm just hyper. I don't know. But now I'm the now I have really stripped away like the last four years of my life when I was with my ex, I was scared to talk about God. No one related with that. I didn't feel like I was um, able to talk about that because I wasn't living in that way. And um, now I can talk about it in a way. Well, yeah, that's the Holy Spirit, baby. It's <laughs> walking right through me. It's working right through me because I've gotten so low that um, I had no choice, I guess, but to really explore and dig deeper into how my fear and my struggle can help serve who I am now. Like it's so part of my purpose It's actually crazy. You know, like you talk about like journaling and um, really letting it all out. Like I do that a lot on social media because I feel um, not that I'm trying to become an influencer, but I'm trying to extend um, where I once was to where I am now and, and give that open availability of transparency for people to really share and be able to dive in um, and know that like part of success is pain and learning your fear and being able to brace that is brave and, and really being brave in order to face your fears when you can discover what love really is. And my whole life, that's what God is to me. And it, it it's such a pr prominent part of my story is love. Right. And then so like it's so interesting because my whole life I'm being told like I, I love hard. I'm a lover. And I always felt like I understood it. And then I went through the hardest time of my life where everything was stripped from me, my worth, my dignity, my community, um, out of choices I made. And then I needed to sit with that and dig deep and say, OK, well, what choice are you going to make now? And are you going to walk in that in a light of faith or a light of fear? And, you know, it's like for me, like sometimes I just look in my look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, it's time to grow up and use the tools that you've been gifted with in an area that's really going to help the overall mission move forward. You know, the one thing that the Popolardos have really done for me is they've helped me understood what real purpose is about. And like, yeah, you guys as a collective have transformed all of us and turned our pain into purpose. And I, I never understood that when I was 24 and I ran away from the business, I couldn't see how that that was part of my story and the purpose. And now 
um, being able to share that and say, please don't go. Your life will not be better without mentorship. I swear it was the most <laughs> destructive part of my life. Like I, like it's valuable to me that I can say those things. Um, I'm, and I'm still fearful sometimes and anxious, but that's why I sit down with PL a couple times a month and I lean in to see it every day. And I, um, really engage myself in the process of healing because it's a never ending journey. Yeah. And I only, I know that God's only going to give me what I'm preparing myself for next, you know, so I have to use the tools I'm being given. And this thing of transforming fear, like when you quoted that daily, <clears throat> we talked about this again, like last night or whenever we spoke, um, the, the um, bravery to do what you're doing is not the absence of fear but intimacy with fear. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was it. Yeah. And so what you're describing is, is being, you know, willing to, with the help and being surrounded with the love that you have and the, and the accountability and the mentorship and everything else. And the broad stroke between all of us as a round table, um, basically, and taking advantage of that to max, you're able to acquaint yourself with fear. You're able to acquaint yourself with pain. You're able to acquaint yourself with all these areas that you would, you know, try to run, run away from or mask or, you know, cope and hope and survive yeah. and not thrive and all those things before and, and tolerable recovery and just dwell and live in that place. And, you know, to me, like when we, when we talk about God is God is the one who basically makes us and gives makes us willing and gives us the grace to um to walk around in all of these areas and accept it as a part of life and not just reject things that are negative or hurtful or, you know, that aren't positive or, or aren't fun or any of those things and embrace all of it as, okay, okay, God, what else you got? You know, yeah. I know you're giving me this story. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah okay. it's, I want to move around in there and I want to be able to become yeah. more of me, more of the genuine me through this encounter to me, that's kind of everything when it comes to like growing in this relationship with God. So I'm making that point because so many people that are probably listening have had this God factor in their lives that's been wrapped around religion, you know, which has just been about rote. It's been about traditions. It's been about rules and regulations and, and all of that stuff, wherein, you know, I think the business is unique in the fact that it gives us a platform to be able to present God in a very, in a, pragmatic way really you know it comes right down to it because he's there like you said oh he's just there you know <laughs> he's not hiding out someplace else he's not absent even in your worst of times you know and he was walking yeah. with you all those times you know kind of like that footprints deal mm -hmm. yeah the footprints he was carrying you even yeah and it's interesting you know to touch on that like what i've found is because of that journey now i'm just as excited for my lows as I am for my highs, right? Because I'm knowing it's preparing me for what's next. So it's like, oh, okay, this is happening. All right. Like, what is this doing for my armor now? How is this strengthening me? And I like, Bring it on. Right? And I like to refer to this area called like called blue sky awareness, where um, I really just believe that like everyone has this really strong frame over their awareness and, um, you know, for me, it's like, okay, let's say like there's this frame over like a, a picture of a of just gray, right? It's just a, a, a gray frame. And then you're like, what am I looking at? You pull the frame off and all of, a sudden, all of a sudden you see there's a cloud and there's a little blue sky there behind the cloud. And you're like, oh, I'm not looking at a picture of gray. I'm looking at a picture of a cloud, but you didn't know it was a cloud because the frame was, was put on too tight. So you couldn't see the blue sky right away until you ripped that frame off of the picture you know so my perspective have, has shifted from not focusing on the gray cloud for the rest of my life but letting the blue sky be my default mode now and knowing that you know the gray cloud will always continue to pass and to know that the blue sky is always on the other side it's just about me broadening my frame of awareness my, it's broadening my frame with faith and God um, to know that for so it's such a long time I was just boxed in and unaware and couldn't see. 
and then I ripped the frame off. And now, like, I feel like you flicker for a little bit, you know, like you go from, you, you're still kind of thinking about that gray cloud most of the time. And then you, when you really start leaning into the process, with some, when something happens now, like when my anxiety comes or something happens that isn't, you know, serving me to my highest capacity, this too shall pass. This is a cloud. The blue sky will continue. This is to make the blue sky even and brighter when it comes. You know, and that's how I really try to look at my life now. Well, that's the cloud's awesome. always moving. The cloud's always moving without a shadow. You don't have a light. Or without light, you don't, you know, the shadow wasn't possible. So the shadows are there. So I know we're going a little bit over. Real quick, can you just give um, in a synopsis kind of format, what's your encouragement to the people who are watching and might be stuck in some of those areas right now in their walks and their journeys that, seem dark or foreboding or like maybe I should just run, maybe I should hide. What would you what would you suggest they do? And then and just name one book that's really helped you currently or even in the past move forward. Okay. Well I could say that um you know, standing on the edge of the pool is something I always used to do, like hesitation. And I would think about how cold the water was and maybe dip a toe in and evaluate it. And um, you see how maybe it would work, wouldn't work. And then instead I would both. I guess my suggestion is to dive in and have faith. And, you know, the, I think there's a fine line between people who decide to stay content and within their struggle and people who decide to advance and forward, go forward out of that. There is this area of release that you experience when you decide to lean into the fear that you can only gain awareness in those moments. If you stay on this side and you stay within the struggle, you're never going to be able to have those conversations or those awareness peaks until you're leaning into it. It's, it's gaining you a new experience. It's gaining you a new um, area of availability to be able to discuss things and work through things. And so it's like, if you never jump into the pool, you'll never be able to talk about the temperature and you'll never be able to talk about if you're able to swim or how fast you can swim or what you're capable of. You'll always just be standing right there wondering. So like my advice is just jump in and discover and explore because you really don't know what you're going to peak in awareness or in faith until you're actually in there digging into it. You know, um, and then yes, a favorite book. Um, for me, like being a sanguine and you know, like a couple of my favorite books are like super aggressive when it comes to getting things done. So like that's a lot of like Tim Grover books when it like winning, relentless, like reminding myself who I am and gaining strength, like in a person that really wants to make things move in the world. But then on the other end, um, I absolutely love John Maxwell and I could read a 200 page book of him and like, I feel like one night I'll sit down and absorb it all because he's just a man of grace and understanding and his context is absolutely brilliant. So like his books as a collective leadership books, self-aware book, awareness books. Uh, John is someone who I always lean into when I'm looking to level up in my leadership, when I'm looking to gain awareness on how to connect better with myself and with other people. Um, so I guess for like uh, relationships and, you know, advancement in those ways, um, but then I guess when it comes more interpersonally, um, you know, like your book, I, I read a lot of like, um, like just like spiritual awareness books. Um, uh, like I, I like Ram Das a lot. He has like a cool perspective, but then um, also the word um, I've been discovering has like basically everything I read in every self-development book is right there in the word. So I've been like very curious <laughs> in there. Um, but I have a wide spectrum and I think that's another point to make as like, I'm constantly educating myself because I can not expect myself to move forward in any arena. Like Francis really set this pace for me. Like she is so absolutely brilliant and how she says things, why she says things. And she's always leans that back into the hidden language within education that most people don't take advantage of. So like one thing I always tell people is I'm not going to be able to inspire you or motivate you for forever. It's something a lot of our leadership says, but I can educate the crap out of you. So you understand the value of why you should move forward and do these things. And I think that's like my purpose really to just share my testimony and and teach people to really educate themselves and advance themselves inwardly. So read. That's good. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kayla, so much. I can see that we thank have to have you guys. back for round two. <laughs> yeah. That's for yeah. Oh, for sure. So that would be wonderful. I, I honor you guys so much and 
you know, like even being on here, um, thank you to the highest of capacity. I know you guys could have a lot of people on here who have taken a lot of time to work on themselves. So um, I, I appreciate the time to share and yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of like you. Yeah, your story is just very important. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. So, Thank you so much, For the sake of time, I'm going to have to crunch. So just not Great forget welcome. the process because that really outlines what we're talking about here today. Yeah. And then uh, this was given to me by my friend Hero. I think I've mentioned this before. It's called The Servant Leader uh, mm -hmm. by Blanchard and Hodges. It's kind of an interactive book that you can write into. It's kind of a journal formatted thing, so you can answer some questions as well. I always like those kinds of books and kind of find ourselves in the in the process there. And uh, also just want to remind everybody, um, once again, that uh, the EIS live broadcast that we all just watched today and we're a part of uh, are, are uh, exclusive to the app. So you have to subscribe to the app. So I hope everybody goes and tells all of their friends that, hey, you need to subscribe to this app. And what we're doing is we're adding uh, lots and lots of content all the time. I think even today we had a bunch of stuff. I'm sure Anita was a part of that, um, adding content. And you can go and find that. I think it's called folders in the app under different topics that you can just go in any time. And they're like four to six minute bites and chunks, you know, that you can go and get fed all the time. And that's just going to be increasing. And of course, the dailies are there in audio format now. And thanks, Kayla, for the um, for the insight to see how we can connect the text, even though everybody gets those things in an email. If they're subscribing and if you're not, you can just go to bill-hoffman.com, subscribe. And at least for now, you would have the email format when you go home after you've listened to it in the car on the way to work or something. And then you can take notes and print it out even or anything like that. And then you also suggested being able to have that play in the background. I'm not sure if that's an app shortcoming or something that we can do. So we're going to be working on that. And I invite everybody else to give your suggestions as well, uh, because we just want to keep improving that and making a great um, vehicle for us to be able to just can bring um, valuable content to everybody day in and day out at any time, 24-7. Yes. Um, and Kayla, if you can, maybe sometime you can write a daily because I can see that you have a lot of good insight and a lot of good ways of saying things. So you're welcome at any time to submit something. That'd be awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. I'd be honored to. Yeah, throw it over. We'll, we'll, we'll be posting them. And you can yeah, do some. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. So um, while we run a little bit over, but that's okay. And also everybody knows, should know by now that you can, after this is done, it probably takes about 15 minutes to actually get uploaded to the app because that's what the app does all by its own self. And it'll be up there for everybody to watch and you can invite some people to go watch that as well. So there you go. Awesome. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. You guys have a great thank, night. You thank you, everyone. And we will let Thanks you know soon. who's going to be coming Bye, up everybody. next week. Bye next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.